Thanks, Sarah Jane. Um, interesting little Freudian slip there, um, because in fact I'm president of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. And the history of that is quite interesting, because it's a membership organization. But if we were to reflect now on where we are, I actually think we'd be far better as the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So a little Freudian slip, maybe Sarah June, you had some, <laughs> some understanding. Uh, hello everybody, I'm David Richmond, as, as Sarah Jane said, I'm president of the RCUG for about another two months. So I'm demob happy, it's great, and I'm gonna spend a lot more time uh, trying to help out with the maternity transformation program. I have, I'm a dad of five kids. Uh, I used to be medical director for my sins in uh, Liverpool Women's Hospital for 17 years. So as a standalone women and women's hospital, dealing with obstetrics, gynecology, genetics, etc., etc., I understand some of the issues. And I understand some of the issues, particularly with regard to money, that standalone maternity services are struggling with in the United Kingdom. So I suppose my first question to you would be, if on a score of one to 10, whether you think we can do better as far as our maternity services are concerned. And that might be quite interesting if you just reflect on that now and what your views are at the end of the morning. Because if we were to look at whether it's perinatal mor mortality, perinatal morbidity, maternal mortality, maternal morbidity, or even perhaps parents' expectations of the services that we deliver, can we do better? Well, I think we can, which is why I'm so uh, delighted to be part of this. And I think it's all like the, the, the heading, what's on the tin, the Maternity Transformation Program, and the actions therein. And that's what you and I need to be delivering. As president of a college, which is 80-odd uh, years old, the fundamental tenets of that organization, be it our college or Royal College of Midwives or any of the other Royal Colleges, their strengths are in education and training and setting exams. Number two, promoting quality of care through focusing on evidence that is out there, synthesizing the evidence, producing guidance that professionals and the public can lay their hands on to optimize care and make it safer. And I think increasingly we're there as advocates for the specialty that we, uh, that, that we deal with. And in the case of the RCUG, it's very much maternity and women's health care. And I think from my point of view, when we're talking of maternity care, it has to start upstream in the preconceptual period it has to travel all the way through the antenatal period, through the intrapartum care, and also postnatal care. And the bits at either end have fallen off the, fallen, fallen off the end. And we, we need to concentrate as well on those two aspects. Julia just mentioned, I think, in her closing remarks there, which I agree with entirely. And when I was medical director, the more top-down authority was rejected it's because people basically got fed up with complying. This compliance is the key. And if we can drive from here, from the bottom up, the commitment is the way forward. We're all fed up with targets. We're all fed up with complying with edicts from on high. If we're to embrace a better maternity care for our women of this country, it has to be through commitment from the bottom up, from the cleaners to the porters to the lowest members of our staff, all the way up through the profession. And when I reflect on the relationship that Cathy and I have, which I think is, 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 is very powerful, and I go back to when I first delivered a baby, which was 43 years ago. And some of you may have been, or maybe from, I've trained in Edinburgh, but the senior midwife there used to stand at the top of the desk like this. And she'd say to me, David, I think you need to be getting a drip ready for the lady in room four. Or I think, why don't you cross-match that lady in room three? And I think you should not be taking those forceps. You should be taking those forceps. They were the twisty ones. And I had no idea what was going on, basically. She had gone down and done a ward round at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. 
the training in those days was not to do vaginal examinations, so she'd done rectal examinations on all these ladies, and she knew what was happening. But that trust and that respect between a junior obstetrician in the making, I didn't actually know that that's what I was going to do in those days, but that trust between the trainee obstetrician, the trainee doctors, and the senior midwives percolated up and down. It percolated across the professions. It enabled me to have considerable respect for my midwifery colleagues, and the mid midwives had considerable respect for the doctors in training and also the senior doctors too. We also had GPs delivering mums on the unit that I was involved with. And we've lost that ability to pull in primary care. Primary care has almost been lost to maternity care. But that opportunity to link and work together, to train together, and to socialize together, we've lost a little bit of that through working time directive and the limitation on hours. And maybe that's something we need to look at. I'm also very conscious, having been medical director, that maternity care has changed. And if you ask my colleagues in the medical world, they would say one of the biggest things is workforce. The stresses and strains of busy units, the gaps in the rotors, the apparent shortage of staff. And that stress throughout the workplace, I think, is something we need to consider. Because if we're going to start making a change, if we're going to start introducing much stronger and better multi-professional training, which we will talk about in the workshops in, in greater detail, there needs to be time and there needs to be opportunity for midwives and trainee obstetricians to undertake that multi-professional training, to be involved together, to be doing it together, we work together, we, must need, to, we, we, we need to train together. Now the nine work streams within the, within the transformation program, each of us will be involved in, in more than in more than one, because they're all relevant to us, whether it's the transformation of where the maternity care is going to be delivered through networks, whether it's choice and personalization, whether it's workforce, whether it's money, whether it's prevention, which we haven't touched on. All of these are germane and relevant to both colleges. It just so happens that I won the toss this morning, so I decided to bat first. And Cathy is coming up, um, is coming up second. But I want you very much to embrace this program of work that is, that is behind all of this. I think it's exciting, and I genuinely think that we can make a difference. But we need to do it together, and we need to get all of our staff committed to the change. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. So just to reiterate a little bit more about working together, Cathy Warwick, um, I'm the Chief Executive of the Royal College of Midwives. I'm right behind the Better Births report. I think it's brilliant. And that's not because I live in an ivory tower in the Royal College of Midwives. I think I still have my feet pretty firmly on the ground. And I think I do understand a lot of the stresses and the strains and the difficulties that all of you who are trying to deliver services out there are going through. I understand that, and I don't think this is going to be easy for you all. But I think it's essential. I think we absolutely cannot carry on doing what we've always done. We've got to change. So I'm right behind this. Now, in relation to multi-professional working, multidisciplinary working, I've always just really enjoyed that. Whether I've been working as a clinical midwife, a midwife teacher, a manager in the health service, I feel I've always worked really, really closely with all of my professional colleagues, and it hasn't presented a problem. And I actually don't think there is a major problem out there. I actually think everybody does want to work together, and mostly people are working together extremely well. But I think there are two issues nowadays. The first is that it isn't as easy as it used to be to work together. I mean, when I was at St Mary's Paddington as a young midwife teacher, working on the wards, teaching the students, there were only six consultant obstetricians to talk to and to discuss things with. We were all there most of the week. We all saw each other all of the time. And it's not like that now. 
you could have 15 obstetric colleagues to deal with, obstetricians, gynaecologists, fetal medicine specialties, and they themselves may have eight labour ward coordinators that are on duty for only part of the week. So the chances of us all bumping into each other, making relationships, making friends, discussing the issues is much less. So I think the first thing we have to do in terms of multi-professional working is recognise that you have to work at it. It won't just happen. We've all actually got to take our commitment and put it into action. The second thing I think that needs to be focused on is what we agree on. We're all so good at discussing what we don't agree about. But actually, in my experience, most of the time, we all want the same thing. And the amount of difference is really quite small. And I always, as a manager in maternity services, when we were having interprofessional multidisciplinary discussion, started the conversation from what is best for women. And that way, we kind of started from a positive note. And I think we need to do much more about focusing our conversations on what we agree on and then distilling out the little bits that we need to resolve. And that needs to start at a national level. And as David said, I think the RCOG and the RCM work really well together. Because of the different structures of the colleges, I've now worked with three different uh, presidents. They've only had to work with me. I hope that's been okay for them. But I feel I've got on well with all of them. And we have achieved a lot. And an example of this is um, the perineal care bundle that we've been working on. Now, we knew we had a problem nationally with increasing numbers of third and fourth, fourth degree perineal tears or, and a lot of trauma that women were experiencing. The RCOG was concerned about that. They decided they wanted to do something about it, and there was a possibility that they headed off on their own and undertook some work. But we got hooked into it, and we started working together on it. And, of course, what that meant was that it wasn't as easy. It's taken quite a long time to develop a perineal care bundle, and we've only really just started piloting it. But what it means is that the bundle, hopefully, will be acceptable to both professions, and we've ironed out in our discussions the potential unintended consequences that there would have been had we gone away and done it on our own. We'd then have had a bigger battle further upstream. So we have to start working together, working on working together, and we need to start at the top and show how we can do it in the colleges, and then we have to work right through the service and make sure it's absolutely embedded. But what does working together really mean? I mean, I used to love it when I was again working in a hospital in London with a very famous, unfortunately now died, obstetrician, and he always was ahead of the curve. You know, he kind of got it that we had to work with women, and then he kind of got that obstetricians and midwives needed to work together. And he would come to me and he'd say, Cathy, you know, we're all part of a team, aren't we? And I'd think, yeah, but the problem is you're always the captain. <laughs> the point about working together is that it's got to be fluid. We as midwives need to work with obstetricians on guidelines for the women who are normal. But I wouldn't expect the obstetricians to write those guidelines. Midwives need to captain the development of guidelines for the low-risk women. If I'm developing a home birth service, I want the obstetricians, the neonatologists, to be discussing the planning of that service with me. But I don't expect them to be in charge because it's a midwifery-led service. Equally, as the fetal medicine service develops, I expect people to talk to midwives about how that will work. But I would expect the fetal medicine guys to be leading the strategy. So working together, to me, means starting at the very beginning, strategizing together, planning together, and implementing together. One of my proudest moments when I was delivering home birth services at King's in South East London was when I heard an obstetrician talking in a forum about our home birth service. Midwives being autonomous does not mean standing apart, in my view. 
Finally, I just want to say, for me, it's all about culture. We can train together till we're blue in the face, and that's really important. But if we don't also work on developing a positive culture, one of mutual respect, we won't get anywhere. And my final, final point is that it's not just about multi-professional working, it's also about interprofessional working. And I would, as a midwife here today, ask all midwives to focus on working well together and never creating a them and us amongst our own profession. Thank you.